Welcome to our in-depth tutorial on how we stamp the floor. We cut this floor out because of the excessive rust on our car. So let's get into it and show you how we did it. So if you didn't already know where this reference comes from and why I called it Dangerous Manifold, this isn't actually a homage to the floor falling off the Mitsubishi Eclipse on Brian O'Connor's car. Rest in peace. So one of the first things we did was scan the car with the floor cut and the driver in. That way we knew exactly where our feet were relative to the cutout portion. Once the scan is done, we're gonna process it in our tech studio and then import it into the CAD software of choice. There's a lot of CAD softwares out there that do handle scan data, SOLIDWORKS, Fusion, Geomagic. So we recommend you use whatever is most familiar with you. Now that being said, for the design of this floor, uh, I'm gonna blitz through this so that you guys understand what's going on, but it's, it's gonna be very similar in most CAD softwares. First thing we're gonna do is define the plane that this floor is going to be built on. So what that means is I'm gonna draw two lines to help define a plane. And then once that line is done, I'm gonna extrude it to make the base floor. After that, I'm gonna go ahead and put my design on it, in which case is the warning danger to manifold. So some softwares allow you to import a DWG file, which you design an illustrator or something else. I just made the text directly in the software itself. And then we're gonna extrude it. So now this goes into step one of designing your stamp, which is what should my draft angle be? So one thing that's really big with stamping metal is you need to have a draft angle with your stamp. What does, what does that mean? That means that you cannot have your extrusion be directly up and down 90 degrees. If it is, what happens is the metal will get stuck and you're not gonna be able to pull it off the stamp. So in this particular case, we did a draft angle of 40 degrees, but the appropriate draft angle is gonna depend on how close that your, your text is, how sharp it is, and a bunch of other things. 40 degrees seems to be the typical appropriate number, but your results may vary depending on the thickness and like I said, the density of the object. So for this, we did 40 degrees, seems to work well, and we're doing a draw distance of about four to five millimeters. Um, and this is a 1 16th thick piece of steel, so right between 14 to 15 gauge. So once the design is good, another thing that we wanna do is make sure that everything is works. So there is a more scientific way of doing this, but for us, we made sure that there was not a huge chance of things mold locking. So with our gussets and our, our dimples that we added to the non-text areas of the floor, we made sure to radius everything, make sure there were no hard edges so that our only hard edges would be where the edges of the text were, like the D. So that's what we did. And then we went ahead and extruded everything to print it. So what you're seeing me do here is now that I've made the, what I call the male side of the die, I just used the extrude function and then extruded through um, while doing a union separation. Union separation basically means, and this might be worded wrong, right? But it, it basically it's, you know, I'm going to extrude everything that's not already material. So you can do that with an offset and that offset, which is that gap you see, is essentially what my material thickness is gonna be. Because if you make it a perfect fit, right, there's not gonna be uh, room for the actual material, which means you're gonna mold lock. So in this case, it's gonna be 1 16th, which is 0 0.0625. So that's how it's extruded. And then we're gonna go print it. So in our printing software, which I use Kira, uh, we need to make sure that this is a relatively solid object, right? On top of that, we wanna have uh, things that help us align it. So in this specific case, I added three alignment dowels to the edges of this material so that I could put my sheet metal down and then align it before I stamped it. So that's what I did. And then doing that, um, I used the standard Harbor Freight five ton press uh, because I don't have a press fancier than that. And I just got metal plates. So I basically worked my way around the press and this, is, this floor was basically exactly the biggest thing you could press on the Harbor Freight press. Um, you might want to use a bigger press if you want to do something things bigger than a floor, but for hobbyists, I don't think you're going to ever stamp anything bigger than this. I didn't actually print this with enough infill, which is another big question, which is, oh, how much infill should I use? Um, after a bunch of testing with other, other materials, I recommend the, the best material and infill combo is 75% with some kind of like concentric infill so that you have all the strength in the Z direction. And as long as you do that, it should be pretty solid. And PLA is super easy to print, super fast to print, and also super tough, which is nice. So again, in summary, PLA 
and then something like concentric infill so that you have all the strength in the Z direction. So we went ahead and welded it, painted it, and this is what it looks like. So other than that, uh, when the car is getting built later down the Rhine, we are going to paint it, make it look nice. But for now, that's, that's as far as we're getting. Um, but this has a lot of wonderful applications. Another wonderful application we did was print smaller dies for aluminum license plates. So this is just a little example of using those same principles to do aluminum license plate stamps. You can see the locating pins are in these four corners as well. And we put on whatever designs and this is a very cheap economical way of doing stamp license plates. So other than that, I hope this video was useful for you guys. And if there's anything we didn't cover, go ahead and leave it in the comments. And I would love to see what we can do to improve future videos so that you guys can learn and do this for yourself. Until then, good luck and hope to see your projects.